Okay, now we're going to get down to the heart of the classic blues rhythm sound, and that's called the boogie shuffle. Now, we've already played a version of the boogie shuffle, but this is kind of the, the fully fleshed out sound. Um, it's interesting to note that this style of rhythm playing uh, is usually credited to a guitar player who now is extremely famous, and his name is Robert Johnson. Now, Robert Johnson didn't play electric guitar on record. There are rumors that he was playing with an electric in clubs and stuff before he died, but there's no uh, recorded record of that. But in any case, he developed a style of, of rhythm playing on his acoustic guitar that um, was borrowed from piano and had some of the same elements as the left hand of the piano. Um, but it was so, it just did the job so beautifully that the people who were uh, inspired by Robert Johnson, who was actually a very small group of people at the time, he was not a popular figure, he wasn't known outside of the Mississippi Delta, but guys like Elmore James and Muddy Waters knew who he was and listened and, and stole his ideas, as everybody steals everybody's ideas. And what they heard Robert Johnson doing was something like this, you know. <laughs> Right? It's that big, booming kind of a rhythm sound. And what's going on in there is the same boogie shuffle that we've been playing, but he added an extra note to it. I'm going to show you what that, what that note is. It's the sixth degree of the scale. Now, if we're in the key of A, one, two, three, four, five, six, put that on the fifth string. I play the power chord, and then I reach up with my little finger. Add that note. Now, there's one little thing you got to be aware of here. I'm playing the power chord, which is a three note chord in this case. And then when I add that note, I only want to hear two notes the sixth string and the fifth string. So I let my fourth finger mute the fourth string. I don't want to hear this, which that's what happens when you bar with your fourth finger. That's not the sound. It's one note, just the sixth. So the, the end result is like this. sound. Now, um, the rhythm that I'm playing, the, uh, the phrasing of the rhythm, the loud notes, the soft notes, the short notes, the long notes, it's exactly the same. So all I've done is add that one extra pitch to it, and it, what that does is give the rhythm kind of a, a, a bigger sense of form. You kind of feel the beginning and the end of the beat a little bit more clearly that way. All right, so here's what we want to do, is play the 12-bar blues using the boogie shuffle rhythm and uh, we'll do it in, in the, we'll start off in the same key that we were in before, key of A, fifth fret area. When I go to the four chord, I do the same thing I was doing before, which is play the D power chord shape. Index finger mutes the sixth string. Add that extra note now. In my picking hand, I'm using nothing but downstrokes. I'm keeping my right hand up and away from the strings. I'm not using palm muting. I'm letting it ring out and I'm controlling it all with my fretting hand. And then there's my five chord. Now when I make my transitions, you hear a little, there's a little pause in there, sort of five. I let go of that, that, that E chord and I give myself an eighth note to get back to the A chord. So I hit the A chord right on the downbeat, but I let go of the E chord a little bit early, and that makes the transition sound smooth. So that's within the rules in, in this game right here, okay? Now, <clears throat> here's what we're going to do as an experiment, because I want you to play this in all keys as usual. I know what you're thinking. Um, we're going to play the 12-bar blues in the key of A, and then without stopping, no pause whatsoever, we're going to switch into the key of D and play the 12-bar blues in the key of D. Now, the result is we're in A, and when you play in A, the, the four chord is D, okay? 
and then E, and then back to A. Where I, that sounds like the key of A. Then when I go back to D, it sounds like I'm on the four chord, but I'm not. I started with a new key. Now G is my four chord in D, and A will be my five chord. It's kind of a weird little musical uh, transition there, but the idea is to mentally hear how the new key kind of takes over, and then reorient yourself so that what was the four chord is now the one chord, and now you're gonna to switch to the four chord. At the same time, we're learning how to use those chord sets. I'm starting on the sixth string, going to the fifth string, five chord. Now I'm gonna to switch to a new chord set for the key of D. I'm gonna use D with the root on the fifth string, then go down to play the four chord G, up to A, and back to D again. Little experiment, let's try it with the rhythm track and see how it sounds. Here we go, key of A. Here's my four chord. Here's five. Stay there. Back to A. Now we're in the key of D. Here we go. Second part of the phrase. Four chord coming. Oh yeah. Back to one. Five. Stay there. Back to one. Now, when, I, when you practice this thing, it doesn't end there, right? What would happen next is you would transition to the next key. Well, we're in the key of D, five, and here comes the one, D. What's the next key in the cycle of fours? It's G, one. Now I'm in the key of G. Here's the second part of my phrase. Here comes the four chord. Okay, and you get the idea. You continue in the key of G, you play the 12 bar with the boogie shuffle all the way through. Then you transition into the key of C. Play the 12 bar with the boogie shuffle, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Blues songs don't sound like that. They don't change keys with every chorus, obviously. So we're creating a little artificial uh, uh, challenge here. But if you can play through all 12 keys with the boogie shuffle without stopping, you really got it. And then you're not going to be intimidated when somebody calls out some kind of a strange key. They're all going to be more or less uh, equally comfortable. Uh, you're also learning how to make transitions from chord to chord smoothly, how to keep time. When you have that, that snare drum in the back, it really does help, doesn't it? It's like whack. Yeah, you know exactly where you are. And so you want to settle back in that pocket and just play that nice, comfortable rolling feel. Don't let your fretting hand sit on the strings. Keep it up in the air and let the notes ring out, okay? Mess with that for a while, and then we'll come back and keep adding to the equation. <laughs>